Hi everyone welcome to my channel Autocar 09 The Panzer IV tank is one of the most important armored fighting vehicles of the Second World War, not simply because of its numbers or firepower, but because of its evolution, versatility, and longevity. In 2026, as we reflect on nearly a century of armored warfare history, the Panzer IV stands out as a platform that defined an era of German tank engineering. It was the only German tank to be produced and fielded throughout the entire duration of World War II, from the invasion of Poland in 1939 to the final battles in Berlin in 1945. During that time, it went through countless upgrades and field modifications, adapting to the changing dynamics of modern warfare. It wasn't the flashiest tank, it wasn't the heaviest, the fastest, or the most fearsome, but it was the workhorse of the Wehrmacht, and in many ways, the backbone of Germany's armor divisions. The story of the Panzer IV begins in the early 1930s, when German military planners, working in secret due to the restrictions of the Treaty of Versailles, began conceptualizing a new generation of tanks. They envisioned two main types, a lighter tank for reconnaissance and support roles, and a heavier, more robust medium tank that could provide direct fire support. The result was a design split between what would become the Panzer III and the Panzer IV. While the Panzer III was originally intended to be the primary battle tank, equipped with an anti-tank gun, the Panzer IV was conceived as an infantry support vehicle, carrying a short-barreled 75mm gun to engage bunkers and fortifications. This original configuration, known as the Oster 1 4th Front A through Oster B, featured relatively thin armor and limited anti-armor capabilities, but as combat experience began to shape battlefield requirements, the Panzer IV underwent a transformation during the early years of the war, especially in Poland and France. The Panzer IV served well in its support role, its gun was effective against soft targets, and its mobility allowed it to operate alongside infantry formations. But as German forces moved into the Soviet Union in 1941, they encountered a new class of enemy tank in the Soviet T-34, with its sloped armor, wide tracks, and high-velocity 76.2mm gun. The T-34 was a shock to the German high command, the Panzer III which was supposed to be Germany's tank killer, was quickly outclassed. Even the Panzer IV, in its early configurations, struggled to penetrate the T-34's armor. This forced German engineers to rethink their designs, while work on new tanks like the Panther and Tiger began in earnest. It was the Panzer IV that received immediate upgrades and was pushed into the frontline role of primary battle tank. The key evolution came with the OSF, F2 and later G. H, and J models, which were equipped with the long-barreled 75mm KWK 40 liters 43 and later L-48 gun. This weapon dramatically improved the tank's anti-armor performance, allowing it to engage T-34S and Shermans on more equal terms. Along with the upgraded gun came increases in armor thickness, particularly on the front glassy and turret face. Where armor reached up to 80 mm in later versions, side skirts were added to protect against anti-tank rifles and shaped charges. Though these upgrades added weight, the Panzer IV's chassis proved strong enough to handle the extra burden. Its suspension and engine, while never exceptional, were reliable and easily maintained in the field. As a result, the Panzer IV became Germany's most widely used and strategically significant tank. By the height of the war in 1943 and 1944, Panzer IVs made up the majority of German armor divisions. They were present on every front from the deserts of North Africa to the vast plains of the Eastern Front and the Bocage fields of Normandy. The tank's modular design allowed for field repairs and component swaps which proved invaluable as the logistical situation for Germany worsened. Crews often praised the Panzer IV for its ease of maintenance and intuitive controls. Its five-man crew WA commander, gunner, loader, driver, and radio operator could work effectively in battle, and German training emphasized coordination and efficiency. In combat, the Panzer IV proved to be a versatile and adaptable platform. It could serve as a tank destroyer infantry support vehicle, and even a command vehicle. Several variants were developed for specialized roles, including command tanks with extra radios, recovery tanks with winches and cranes, 
and bridge layer versions. The chassis also served as the basis for many other armored fighting vehicles, including the Stug 4 assault gun and the Nashorn tank destroyer. This versatility extended its utility long after newer and heavier tanks like the Panther and Tiger began to enter service. Indeed, Many German commanders preferred the Panzer IV over the heavier tanks, citing its reliability and lower logistical burden.